And coming up next, a middleweight championship fight between Damian Maya and Tom Breeze. So here he is, the number one middleweight contender getting set for this 185 pound title fight. He believes this title shot should have come a long time ago, but he has let bygones be bygones. The focus now, unseating the champion in dominant fashion and starting a new middleweight legacy of his own. 25 minutes or fewer away from becoming the new champion. We will see how he performs tonight. So here's the undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world making the walk, looking to defend his title. It is certainly something that he's been able to do in the past. He has been challenged on this title run. It's not as though he has run rough shot through this division, but they're all still chasing him at 185 pounds tonight. At least on paper, could be his most difficult challenge to date. or tell the tape for this middleweight championship fight. More than a decade separates these two fighters when it comes to the age, and they both possess a similar height and reach. All right, now for the official introductions, we send it inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC middleweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 11 wins, three losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Presenting the challenger, Tom Reeves. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 28 wins, 11 losses. He stands 6 feet 1 inch tall, weighing in at 185 pounds, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, presenting the reigning, defending UFC undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Damian Maia! So here we go with round one, and when you are facing a submission specialist like this as a striker, you have got to avoid the canvas, I would think at all. Yes, you have to. And if the striker gets taken down, he needs to make sure the only thought is to get back to his feet. And quickly. Whether the submissionist goes to his back or is on top, you've got to make plan number one, getting back standing and getting back to your space. If not, you're going to find yourself tapping and really wondering why. Why did I not engage him in this game? Look at you dropping a submission. Ah, it's crazy. 
and a miss with the right hook. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Ooh, head kick lands. He's hurt. Big ball punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Misses with the right hand. Highest kick is blocked. Nice job to land the kick to the body there by Briggs. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kick. Landed a good uppercut there. Now goes in and secures the takedown. rolling leg lock in MMA, man, is you get beat up, especially if you're a little bit hurt. He might get a finish here. Potentially working on a leg attack here, DC. It looks like he's attacking a heel hook. Fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape DC. Now try to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yeah, now he's okay. Now he can escape. 30 seconds to go. Maya gets up. He is back on the feet here. All right, here, final seconds of round one. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? All right, a lot of tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a telestrator, but take us through. I mean, I would love to have my telestrator right now. That was a great display of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. All right, let's get to round two. Big kick land. Stuffs the takedown. No problem. He changes the angle. Finds the right spot to land that punch to the head from the clinch. Oh, connects with another uppercut. So that's been the weapon of choice, and he went back to it there and lands. Over and over again, he has thrown that punch, and it's because he feels comfortable there. He does not feel like his opponent can return anything because he's popping his head up every time he lands that nice uppercut lands the right hand. Beautiful kick. Checks the leg kick. Nice sneaky head kick. Maya going for the takedown. Nothing doing there. Big punch lands over the top. I was going to follow this one. Oh, there's a takedown attempt. Big head kick. Punch to the head, blocked though by Maya. Well, Breeze's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swelling. All right, so he's landed some good shots. He hates to be overly critical, but nothing really in terms of combinations to me. Well, the jab has been looking great. How about jab, jab, right hand? Because eventually you're gonna have to put something on your opponent that's gonna really make him pause. I believe the jab is been working so well if he drops a big right hand after it, he may be able to finish his fight. Breeze going with the kick to the body. He's an outstanding kicker, but that attempt missed. Nice punch lands over the top. 
Myers. And he lands a kick to the leg now. Pretty good work on the feet tonight by Myers. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Just missing on the uppercut there. 15 seconds to go. Nice strike. Hard shots landing on both sides here. And that's the end of round number two. All right, that's the end of the round. You see the cut on his lip, ladies and gentlemen, is only getting worse. Likely going to need to get stitched up after the fact. And blood in and around the mouth area could upset his breathing pattern. Not a good reality for him here tonight. All right, now we take a look back at some of the highlights. He has had his kicking game going early and often tonight. I mean, on point, right? He knew that this was going to be a way for him to take control of this fight. He's used those kicks to really put him out ahead. And I'm not sure if his opponent has the ability to adjust and stop him from landing. Good job to get the head kick home, and now his opponent in a world of trouble. Such a sneaky head kick. He did not recognize him. And now he's got him hurt bad. Well, just as he did in the previous round, he continues to connect on a high volume of strikes. And a good sign, too, doesn't seem to be slowing down whatsoever. What a fun. Leg kick there by Briggs. I mean, look at the commitment to kick it in this fight. Kick to the body. Whoa! Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and ground strikes here. short night for his opponent, but that was just one perfectly placed strike that his opponent candidly didn't even see coming. It landed flush, and the rest, as they say, is history. Big knockout win for him here tonight. And there is the UFC middleweight king. Best fighter in the world at 185 pounds. What a knockout he turned in here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 27 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world, Damian Maia. All right, so there he is, the still UFC middleweight champion of the world. He has retained this title at 185 pounds for some time and, and showing no signs of slowing down. This is a weight that hasn't had many middleweight champions. Anderson Silva reigned for so long that every time a guy gets his hands on the belt, they're going to hold on to it for dear life. And tonight, he got the job done and remains the UFC middleweight champion.
Coming up next, it is a light heavyweight championship fight between Jan Bojovic and Corey Overtime Anderson. All right, here he is making his way to the octagon and looking to leave as the new UFC light heavyweight champion. He is the number one ranked 205 pound contender and is finally realizing the title fight here tonight. He believes he has a lot of advantages in this fight. He believes he's the better man. Look at the confidence on his face. No UFC jitters for this man. He is out to prove tonight that this champion is a one trick pony and that he is the best light heavyweight on the planet. We'll see if he can turn those words into actions here in short order. Well, he has joined a long list of Hall of Fame types. Chuck Liddell, John Jones, Daniel Cormier. Now this man is the hunted at 205 pounds. He is the UFC light heavyweight champion. He has defended the belt. He has proven without a shadow of a doubt that he's the best 205er in the world. A lot of momentum with the challenger here tonight, though. A lot of people think we're getting a new champion. The champion is not among those. We'll see if this man can walk out the same way he walked in as the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. Our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. So a more than five year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age, and they both possess a similar height and reach. All right, now for the official introductions, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 14 wins, 5 losses. He stands 6 feet 3 inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Introducing the challenger, Corey Anderson. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai fighter, holding a professional record of 29 wins, 9 losses, and 1 draw. He stands 62 inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Warsaw, Poland, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, John. All right, this is for the championship. You've been given your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We will have a clean fight. Touch gloves, let's make it official. The fighters touch him up. All right, so here we go. This highly anticipated fight is now underway. Looks like a classic matchup of striker versus grappler. Am I simplifying things too much? In this instance, you aren't, because this is what got these two men to the show. Right. One guy is known 
for his diverse attack on the feet. The other guy is known for his ability to drag the fight to the mat and put his opponents in danger from the very start of the grappling exchanges. That strike blocked by Blahovic. Oh, and he is getting tagged repeatedly. Nice combination of strikes up top. Oh, beautiful combination up top. I don't understand why the guy is not moving his head. Oh! Dude's hurt. Serves him up. Go get him. Corey Anderson pulled it off. That one was thrown to end the fight. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he's cutting them down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Big kick lands. Three minutes. Oh, nice. Nice. So we pull up the goal. Oh, what a head kick there as he lands, and maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got him hurt very bad with his head kick. Now he has to find one more strike to end the night. Oh, nice strike landed there by Blahovic. Nice high kick. Much improved. Oh, a huge strike lands there, DC. He landed that massive shot. Now he needs to try to find the next shot, the follow-up shot, that will finish the fight. Both these gentlemen are putting it on the line. Oh, that'll ring your bell. Head kick. Bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Now the guy's got armbar. He's attacking it on it. He's going to attack armbar here. You got to recognize that when the guy starts to put his feet on your hip, nicely done. up there, gained some valuable separation. And now, the grounded pound starts. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him. Anderson's going for the rear oh, naked Oh, and there's shot. the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, so a huge round for him there. Nearly had him out of there with the head kick. Did get the knockdown. Talk us through the replay. He got the knockdown. He won the round. He did everything correct. The only thing he didn't do is finish the fight. But if he continues down the path, if he continues to do the exact same thing as he did before, he will get that finish. Gets hit with a kick here. Let's see how he responds. Those jabs are landed, though. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is... This fight's going to be over. This. What a great way of mixing up the attack. He didn't stay the court. He mixed it up. He went high with the point of going low. And now he's got to hurt very bad. Try to start attacking a rear naked choke from the top position. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. Yeah, notice he just took the body triangle, readjust the lock, and now it looks like he's got it. There is the tap. So he submits courtesy of the rear naked choke. That guy's got a squeeze on. He does a great job securing the position, getting under the neck, and then hiding his hands in order to get the finish. Fantastic performance by this fighter. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, you can tell he has been working hard on his submissions in his training camp. That was a near-perfect setup on that choke. Sunk it in deep, and the opponent had no choice but to tap out or go to sleep. He chose to tap out. All right, so a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground, DC. Talk us through the highlight. He's such a phenomenal grappler. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you. He is the best grappler, best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. Well, the celebration is on for that man, the UFC light heavyweight champion, and why not? What a performance tonight on the sport's biggest of stages as he gets it done by way of submission. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop in this contest at 1 minute, 35 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by tap out. And new undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Jorge Anderson. Well, he came in ubiquitously regarded as the best contender in this light heavyweight division, and he proved he belonged tonight, submitting the incumbent to become the new UFC light heavyweight champion. Rarified air for this fighter here tonight, and man, is he enjoying it with the corner now. Can't help but feel good for that guy to finally get over the hump and get to the top of the heap. We have a new UFC light heavyweight